Did you know that there are currently over 57 million freelancers in the United States? And did you know that freelancer.com has over 52 million registered users? Yes, that's right. Freelancer.com is one of the largest freelancing sites in the entire world, and you hardly ever hear about it. And as somebody who worked as a freelancer for a long time myself, and now I have paid out over $100,000 to various freelancers over the last three to five years, I kind of know a lot about freelancing at this point. So I decided to make this video, I decided to talk about how you can make money using freelancer.com. And this is going to be a video for complete beginners. But I think if you are a seasoned freelancer, you will probably learn a few things from this video as well. You are going to learn to be more professional, Luke. That's what you're going to do. And I posted a poll on my YouTube channel asking people if they're interested in freelancing and 75% of you said yes. And about 60% of you either have started a business or are interested in starting one. And and freelancing is kind of the in-between step between being an employee and a business owner. So gently tap that like button and let's go ahead and jump into this right now. All right, so the first thing you wanna do when you are deciding that you want to become a freelancer, and this is a mistake I see all the time, is you need to make sure that you only do jobs that people from your country can do. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? There are many different types of freelancing jobs out there that somebody from a country with a very low cost of living like India or the Philippines or Armenia Armenia can very easily do themselves. This gives them a tremendous competitive advantage over you. In the United States of America, if you're making $10 an hour, you're barely getting by. Whereas if you're making $10 an hour in the Philippines or in India, you live like a king. So it's very important that you make sure that whatever skill set you choose, whatever you know gigs you try to do, you're not competing with people from other countries. Now you might be thinking, you know what, ah, I'm not going to do this freelance thing. How in the world can can I compete with that? Well, there's actually tons of different types of jobs out there where I would rather hire an American or you know somebody who's British, Canadian, uh, Australian, etc. And the reason for that, it's kind of subtle and difficult to explain, but I'll explain it by giving you an example. In the next six months to a year, I'm probably going to hire somebody to do link building outreach for me. And that is because I am starting my blog. And anybody who knows about blogs know that if you want to rank your blog, especially if you want to rank it fast, you need to get backlinks pointing to your blog from other big websites. Now, this is something that requires you to reach out to big websites, so your English has to be excellent. And not only does it have to be excellent, but you have to sort of have a cultural understanding of what is appropriate to say and what is not appropriate to say. Because chances are, if there's one tiny little thing wrong with your email, they're just gonna ignore it. And then you have to negotiate with the people from those blogs. And that's another one where you're kind of walking a tightrope. If you don't have a perfect understanding of the English language, language as well as cultural nuances, you're probably not going to be able to get to a good negotiation. It's one of those things where you never want to cross the line, but at the same time, you have to push hard enough to get what you want. So negotiation is one of those extremely subtle skills that it's very difficult to do if you don't have a good command of the English language and you've grown up in the country of the person who you're negotiating with and you have a very good idea of the cultural nuance. So there's many different jobs like this where you either have to hire an American or it just saves you a lot of time to hire an American because it would take you extremely long time to train somebody from another country to do it. So these are the types of jobs that you want to find. Never compete with somebody from a country who can live off of like a dollar or three dollars an hour. That is a terrible idea. Now, the second thing that you want to do is try to do jobs that only people from your background can do. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you want to make sure that you have a competitive advantage in whatever job you're doing. So the best way to do this is to take an inventory of your skills, what you're naturally talented at, what you enjoy, and what you've accomplished in your life. So for instance, you might be watching this and you are an accountant. So that would put you in a unique position to set up freelancing gigs that are specific for accountants. So for instance, you might go on Fiverr and tutor people that are trying to pass the CPA exam. Or you might go on Fiverr and help people craft really good resumes so that they can get jobs themselves. This is something that 99% of the population can't do because they are not accountants. So you have a competitive advantage. So you definitely want to just take out pen and paper and just write down all of the things that make you unique and don't judge it. Just let it, let yourself write it. You know, even if it's like video games, like you're really good at Call of Duty or something like that, just write it down and then figure out what your competitive advantages are and then try to do those things. Now, number three is very 
very similar to number two, but you basically want to do things with the skills that you already have. So if you see something and you realize you have to learn like a programming language or you have to do all this you know, stuff, it's gonna take you a really long amount of time usually you kind of want to stay away from that, especially if you're trying to make quick money. So it's really best to try to do things with the skills that you already have. And the reason for that is because when you start doing these gigs, you're still going to be learning other skills, right? There's still other things that you're going to be adding on. So it's nice if you already have a really good base skill set to build off of. Now, one really valuable skill I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. People have been getting jobs left and right. I've been interviewing them. One of the best careers and one of the best skill sets you could possibly learn is digital marketing. I have a bunch of different interviews of people who have gotten jobs in digital marketing with this specific program. And lucky for you, you can actually take a free masterclass on digital marketing. If you have any questions or you think maybe it's a good career for you and you just want to figure out what digital marketing is, check that out down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Now, number five on the list is a little bit more advanced, but there are people out there making millions and millions of dollars a year doing this. And this is where you basically find people from other countries to do the job for you. Now, there are a lot of skill sets in freelancing that sort of fall in the middle between something that only a person from like a first world English speaking country can do versus something that somebody from, you know, a country with a lower cost of living can do. There are some skills that are kind of in the middle. And so if you are a freelancing mogul, you can get really good at training people from countries with low cost of living how to do this skill. And then basically, you know, you look at it at the last moment, uh, you know, clean a few things up here and there, give them some tips and then submit it. I have seen a ton of people doing this. For instance, one of my business owner friends basically does what's known as instructional design. This is basically a type of video editing, but it's specifically for education material and typically it's for interactive educational material so you might be you know watching a video and then a quiz pops up on the screen the skill set of creating those types of things is known as instructional design now this is something that's very difficult for somebody from a low cost of living country to do and the reason for that is because it does require a lot of cultural nuance knowing what's right to put in knowing what's wrong to put in you have to have really good English etc however my friend has actually started a very nice business he is doing extremely well by hiring people from other countries to do about 90% of the work for him and then he does the last 10% himself. So this is a very good option for those skills that are kind of in the middle. Now for skills that you absolutely have to have like an American or somebody from a first world English speaking country, you can go to number six on the list which is find people from your country to do the job for you, right? So this is typically gonna be for a very high ticket type service because you're gonna have to be paying an American to do the job for you. And America has pretty high cost of living. So you're going to have to pay them a pretty good wage. But yeah, this is something that you can do as well with certain types of services. The seventh thing you can do is actually sign up to a bunch of different freelancing websites and get ideas from those other websites. So you might sign up to fiverr.com, Upwork, Freelancer, etc. And then you see that a bunch of people on upwork.com are making a ton of money doing this particular skill and there's nobody doing it on Freelancer. Well, that is a big opportunity for you because chances are with like 50 million users, there's somebody that needs that skill set. So if you already have that skill set, that's great. Or you can take the time to learn it. And then the eighth thing you can do to make money from freelancer.com is to become an affiliate. Remember, there's like 50, 60 million different freelancers in the United States. So a ton of people are interested in freelancing. So if you sign up to freelancer.com and become an affiliate, you can probably promote that to other people and make quite a bit of money. Now I am not currently an affiliate. But if I do become one, I will go ahead and put that link down in the description below as well. Check out this interview I did with a 16 year old that was able to get a $40,000 a year job in digital marketing. Gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and I will see you next time.